I would like to bring some scripture into this uh, this video today, bring it to life in our and apply it to our, our life today and what we may be going through. I know that a lot of us are going through relationship issues, family and friends that have turned on us that have basically hurt us, deceived us, tricked us. And it's just it's just a learning lesson. I mean, I'm I'm I've gone through this. Um, I've been going through it for so long that when I came out of it, I was like, wow, why didn't I see this a long time ago? Um, I was blinded. Um, I, I do love people a lot, and I can feel how they feel, as as humans can. <laughs> but when we harden our hearts, like some people do, some people can't feel the the way the emotions that soft-hearted people can feel. And they certainly can't act like it for very long. They can't pretend very long. This scripture is from Luke, and it is chapter 9. And it starts at verse 51. When the time came for Jesus to be received up, he was steadfastly going to Jerusalem and sent messengers ahead of him. They went and entered a village of the Samaritans to make things ready for him, but they did not receive him because he was set to go to Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elijah did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, You do not know what kind of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. So... <laughs> First of all, I know that when Jesus went into the Samaritan's village and he was trying to attempt to go into the house that was ready for him, found it wasn't ready, he didn't get upset over it. He didn't let that bother him because like James and John got mad and they wanted to punish those people themselves. And Jesus just knew it was part of God's plan. He knew it was, it was his time to go to Jerusalem um, to be received up. Um, is what it says in the first verse we read. So he already knew that the father had a plan, that he was on a certain path and a certain road that nobody could deter. And if, in case things did, God, he knew God was directing it. So if he didn't have time to be at the Samaritan's house or there was reason he wasn't supposed to be there, then God made sure that they weren't ready for him. And he didn't go in. James and John got mad, um, was very protective over their master, and, or, you know, and said, you know, do you want us to command fire down from heaven and consume them even as Elijah did? Now, James and John, I believe that's why they're called the Sons of Thunder, is because I believe that, that uh, they were very, you know, protective. And, and that statement they made about the light, about the fire coming down from heaven, I think that Jesus called them the Sons of Thunder. That was their nickname. Okay, so he turned and rebuked them and said, you do not know what kind of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, to but to save them. So we're not supposed to take vengeance on people. And we're not supposed to punish people. And we're not supposed to destroy people's lives. But we've had people try to dis destroy our lives. I've had people de try to destroy my life. You've had people try to destroy your life. Um, that is not of God. That's of the devil. And some people, some people worship the devil. Some people are Satanists. Some people are Luciferians. They believe that that is where their power is. It's all about power and it's deception and it's witchcraft and sorcery and it's it's the occult and it, it's all the darkness in the world. They choose that because they find it's it's a way, it, it, it draws them in. The darkness has a way of enticing them and putting a smell over them and blinding them and the devil can blind people. The Bible does say that he he blinds people. Now, the only way we can awake and have the, the scales fall off our eyes and see spiritually is, is through the Word of God and reading God's Word and getting to know Him because He's the only one, and this is the only way to know what is right and what is wrong. This is it. This is, this is, this is how you stay out of their hypnosis. This is how you, how you can stay out of having a spell put on you. Um, this is how you can wake up from the slumber, is by keeping in the word, um, having it in your heart. You know, they can try, because they've tried it with me, and I've I've um, came very close to not making it out of their grips. 
But God is faithful. God is so faithful. He protected me. And just as the Bible says, you know, he is my protector. And there are a legion of angels around me, surrounding me. And the Holy Spirit is in me. And there's nothing they could do or make me do that would ever take that away. God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever would believe on him would not perish but have everlasting life. That is phenomenal. The love that he has, even a drop of his love, we couldn't even contain. We couldn't understand it. We couldn't, we couldn't. The, the love that we feel is, is God is love. First John says that several times. God is love. God is love. Okay. The love we feel isn't even close to the love he has for us. It's amazing. I'm going to read on. It says, as they went along the way, a man said to him, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the son of man has no place to lay his head. He said to another man, follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, leave the dead to bury their own dead, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. Yet another said, Lord, I will follow you, but first let me go bid farewell to those in my house. Jesus said to him, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back at the things is fit for the kingdom of God. So it doesn't say if those two ended up following. Evidently, they were, they were making up excuses as, as, you know, they acted as if they wanted to do what was right. Uh, preaching the kingdom of God is a high calling. And he was telling this guy, you know, to just, to, to not go back, to not look back and to go preach the kingdom of God. Um, people want to, when God calls you, it's the highest calling you can have. When you want to follow Jesus, it is, it is, he, he is emphasizing what a big deal this is. Um, you may have to leave your family to do this. You may have to leave your old lifestyle. You'll have to leave. There was a guy in the Bible that was, that God had asked for him to sell his belongings and give them to the poor and come follow him. And the guy went away really sad because he had a lot of possessions and he evidently went away. So he didn't follow Jesus, but he was doing everything right. Um, he was a Jewish guy and he had, he was raised Jewish and he was following all the laws, the 10 commandments and all the traditions of the Jewish people. But because he was unwilling to let some things go, disattach, unattach himself with some things in this world, Jesus said that if we are not willing to leave our family, our mother, our father, or even our children, um, husband or wives, sisters, brothers, to follow him, we're not, we're not worthy. Um, and it's true. It's very true. We have to be willing to let go of that. If we fully know 100% and believe what this, what this word says, okay, if we believe it 100%, which I do, he said that once we give any, everything up, that not only in this life will he bless us and, and give us double for our trouble, but in the next life he will as well. So there's promises. He keeps, he's a promise keeper. He doesn't say something and not do it like humans, okay? He's not like that. <laughs> he's um, God. He's all powerful and he's all good. God knows evil exists. He does not practice evil. He is not evil. Some people are evil, okay, and they choose to be that way. Um, they have teachers and um, Satan. Like I said, they're Satanists and witches and warlocks and sorcerers, mediums, tarot card readers. That's something that um, needs to be talked about too. Um, I, I watch YouTube. Of course I do. But I also see a lot of people talking about God and Jesus and prophesying. And then all of a sudden I see that they have, they sound good to me at first. You know, I'm listening, all interested. And then I see someone flip over a tarot card and I immediately swipe. I'm so sick of seeing that. It disgusts me. It's as if people are, the tarot cards are not of God and these women, I've only seen women do it. Probably guys do it too that are on YouTube that do this. They're deceived. They're deceived into believing that these prophecies, if they're mentioning the name of God and Jesus, 
they're deceived into thinking these tarot cards are God speaking through them. No, no. Satanists, witches, people that worship the devil use tarot cards. You know, they if they do know what they're doing and they're bringing the name of Jesus into it to entice you and make you believe it's okay, it's not okay. Just so you know, it's not okay. Tarot cards are not good. Do not do them, okay? Psychics, they're not good. Um, in the New Testament, the disciples, you know, when the churches were just springing up all over, they were had they they were they had a lot of power with the Holy Spirit. They were able to heal people, raise them from the dead, do all this this cool stuff. Um, this sorcerer was actually he was a magician, and he was able to do things like that through illusion, deception. Uh, the power from the devil, however he did it, he was able to do it. But then he realized that the Holy Spirit was stronger and they were able to baptize people with the Holy Spirit, lay hands on them, and this Holy Spirit would come into this person. He wanted to buy it. He asked, how much, is, how much does it cost? I want to buy that power. And of course they rebuked him and said, this power, go and repent because this power you cannot buy. This power is, a, is given. It's of God. God isn't in it for the money. God isn't in it for that. You know, he owns a thousand cattle on a thousand hills, he says. He doesn't need anything, you know. He doesn't get hungry. He doesn't, he doesn't sleep. He doesn't get tired. He's constantly, constantly organizing, um, orchestrating our lives. He has it planned out from the very beginning, from the time when time began you know, to the very day this world will no longer exist. He has it all planned out. Jesus was, was the centerpiece of this plan. He's the centerpiece of everything. Um, there was a medium in one of the, in the New Testament in Acts uh, that was following around the disciples and saying, oh, they are of God. They're the apostles of God. And she was right. They were, you know, she had a psychic ability. Um, she had been uh, she was, she had been bought, you know, she had been a slave um, and they had taught her, trained her how to do this or some, somehow it doesn't explain how she got this power, but she had this ability to, to be psychic. Obviously it wasn't of God. They rebuked her. They let her do it for a couple of days, but they, they finally said unclean spirit, get out of her. So you got to understand this is of the devil. If anyone says they are psychic, if they can... Now, in the Old Testament, there's prophets, okay? There's prophets, there's seers, okay? They, they were able to get a message from God, a download from God, and be able to do it and tell people warnings or answer questions that, that, that they had because that was the way back in the Old Testament how, how people talked to God. He, he did it through a prophet. Um, there, the Holy Spirit wasn't on the earth yet. It hadn't been poured out yet. Um, that happened when Jesus ascended. That's why he said, it's better if I leave because I will send down the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Counselor to always be with you, to lead you into all truth. So, you know, they, they, they had to speak through a prophet. Uh, a lot of the kings had prophets. They, they were advised. Uh, David had Nathan. Um, Saul had Samuel. You know, they had, they had advisors, spiritual advisors. And that's how they talk to him. You know, Saul, King Saul, for instance. This is not the Saul that turned into Paul in the New Testament. Don't get that wrong. It's a, it's a king. Um, right before King David became king, Saul was an evil. He turned out to be a really evil guy. However, when Samuel died, the prophet, he went to a medium and asked her to bring up Samuel's spirit. Samuel's spirit, he was dead arose and said, why are you disturbing me? You know, um, Saul wasn't supposed to do that. That was against God's rules. Do not do that. Do not mess around with that. Um, he died. He died the next day. And Samuel did uh, prophesy of that as well, it, even though he was dead. He, you're not supposed to do that. Don't mess with that stuff. And if you are, repent, get, get rid of it. Get rid of everything you have that is evil. It's as if people that used to worship false gods, they always had um, 
artifacts, things they, they had, tangible things that they used to worship their false gods with, whether it be the, you know, the, the statues of them, uh, pictures of them, um, anything like that. God says, get rid of all that, get rid of it. You know, that is false. Uh, that's idolatry. And we, there's only one God, one God. The false gods are devils and demons, okay? They are devils and demons, and Satan himself. Do not, do not fall into that trap, okay? This world is full of it today. Actually, it was a, it's, a, it's almost trendy, you know, to be part of a coven or to read tarot cards or to tell someone's fortune. Okay, so the prophets of God, they could, they could see the future because God was giving them this, this download. But the difference is they gave glory to God. These fortune tellers, even you call a psychic number, do they really say, oh, Jesus is saying this to you? No, it, that's decep deception. Um, the, like the ones I saw, they were using Jesus's in God's name as they were reading tarot cards. That is, that is so wrong. And... Um, if you're any of those, if you guys do that, or if you guys watch anybody that does that, please understand how serious this is. In Revelations, it actually says that no sorcerer is going to make it into the kingdom of God. It also says no liar, no whoremonger, no evil person. Um, so we know no murderer. Okay, people need to repent. You know, we could have done this stuff in the past. We could have done all that stuff in the past. You could, you could, people that have murdered people have repented and are fine. Their souls are good. But that's, that's the key though. You have to repent and you have to give your life over to God. Believing in God, the Bible says, is not enough. And the Bible says that the demons believe in God and they tremble. So demons believe in God, but that doesn't save them. They're not saved. Demons can't be saved. The devil cannot be saved. Okay, they, they can't. We can. That's a good thing. No matter what you've done, no matter how far you went into the darkness, you can always come back out. Do you guys know of a guy named John Ramirez? He wrote a book called Out of the Cauldron. And he, he was a, a, a warlock and he had a lot of powers from the devil. He, he, was a, he talked to, the, to Satan uh, face to face and he learned, and it was like his dad, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was a sick kind of uh, attachment he had with them, almost like a father figure. And he was able, he had a lot of powers. He had, a, he was able to do a lot of things. Um, it, he could cast spells on people to kill them, to have them have miscarriages. You know, he could leave his body at night and go around and put curses on different areas and regions that, that whatever, whatever the high up told him to do, you know, he was, he was a soldier of Satan. So he did what he was told. He did mention a time when he was astro projecting and he was over a certain region and he was trying to get these Christians, you know, put curses on these Christians, but they were in a circle praying and he, he literally couldn't touch them because there was a circle of like fire around them. They were so protected. He said he would, he couldn't touch those people. So you got to understand children of God, we have protection. We have angels around us. We have the Holy Spirit, okay, that will protect us against these evil intentions, these designs that they have, uh, have uh, conspired to do to us. He also mentions um, he would go into bars and find Christians. That get, well, they called themselves Christians. You know, maybe they're baby Christians. Maybe they haven't learned how to. I mean, I was at that point too, um, you know, where I was still going to bars, even though I was a Christian at a time in my life um, doing things. But I, I didn't understand. I, I was not taught or trained up correctly in that. That's why it's very important when you are a new Christian, to have a lot of people around you that are able to guide you into the right direction. That's why going to a church is really important. Um, they usually have programs for the first 30 days of being saved or after they baptize you, they have you, they, they, they just kind of gather around you and, and, 
and lead you in the right direction. I was in jail <laughs> um, almost 30 years ago when I, I became a Christian. And I didn't, when I got out, I was still in the same people that were around me. I, I, I did not go to church. Um, I did watch Joyce Meyer every day. She was, she was the one that raised me. I, I will be honest. She's my spiritual mom. And for up until this day, I still watch her. And she taught me most of everything I know. Well, the Bible did, but she is, she, she was amazing. She was the person I needed to see every single day in my life, even though it was on television. I needed to see her every day. Now we have YouTube. Okay, it's very easy to get on and find somebody that will teach you and guide you. It's, it's better in person though, it really is. It's better to have a family like that. Um, <clears throat> to be surrounded by like-minded people who want the best for you. I went back, like Jesus said, I send you out like, like sheep among wolves, you know? Actually, he says it right here, right in chapter 10. He said, after this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them two by two ahead of him into every city and place where he himself was about to come. He said to them, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore that the Lord of harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your ways. Listen, I'm sending you out as lambs among wolves. We know there's a lot of wolves out there. God is sending people out as sheep. The missionaries that go out there in countries that 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 are against God and Jesus Christ that you know that that will kill Christians. He knows the danger that he's sending us into as we stand, especially in the, the latter times, the end times here that we're in, how dangerous it, it can be to be a Christian and how dangerous it's going to be. Uh, it's gonna get worse. You know, there are still so many countries where it's illegal to be a Christian. Luckily, we're, it's not here yet. We still have Bibles. We still have all that, praise God. Um, have you guys watched the movie? It's the... The Book of Eli, I guess, is what it's called. There really isn't a Book of Eli in the Bible. There's a guy named, there is uh, the word Eli in the Bible several times. Uh, like when Jesus called on God, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabak, then even he was on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So, But this is not an actual book in the Bible. It's a, the name of a movie, The Book of Eli. Um, Denzel Washington is in it, I believe, and he's blind in this movie. But you don't know until the very end that he's blind. So I probably just, if you haven't watched it, I kind of gave that away. But this, but you probably won't have time to watch it anyway. But this, this guy, they, they, the Bible is, is they have one copy of the Bible and these people are hiding it. it. The world had got to a point where there was only one Bible left in the world and nobody knew it. Nobody knew it or heard, or nobody had read it themselves or really studied it. But these group of people were keeping it from the rest of the people because they knew that would save them. Um, they were all against God and they were holding it. And Eli was sent to get that book back. So he's going throughout the movie. And we, and he doesn't act blind. No one even knows he's blind at this point because he has such good senses that he, you know, he protects himself and he does all kinds of stuff even though he's blind. So to get to the, to make a long story short, the book is destroyed. The book is destroyed. And everyone that wanted to read the Bible was, was very sad. You know, this book was supposed to save. It was, it was a book they knew that had life in it that would have gave them eternal life. And it was destroyed. In the very end, the very end of the, the, the movie is the best. They have a, a guy writing and he, he's laying down and he's saying, in the beginning was the, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It, so, do, so do you get it? I mean, he, he had memorized the whole Bible. So he, he was a living Bible and it, he was going to write it down. And, well, he was going to have it, someone else write it down so that everybody could have access to this word. Okay, that's how important the word of God is. That's how important it really is. And that's, I mean, that movie, it's all facts. I mean, think about this. The Bible says you're saved by hearing the word of God. 
Okay, but how can people hear it if no one preaches it? Okay, and how can anyone preach it unless they are called by God? So you got to be called by God first, which we are. Um, you know, like, like he said, this guy that just randomly walked up to him, he's like, uh, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back at things is fit for the kingdom of God. And then before that, he said, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. So we are all called to preach the, the kingdom of God. We're all called to do that. Many are called, he said, but few are chosen. The chosen ones. Why we use the word chosen ones. The reason I use it, I'll tell you why I use that, that phrase and remnant, is because there are few. Few. Very few. Like the narrow path I was talking about in one of my videos. The narrow path. Few find it. Few find it. The, the narrow path to life, eternal life. Jesus is the key. Jesus is definitely the key. But believing, like I said, believing on the name of Jesus Christ is not going to save you. It's believing that he died for your sins. He died for the sins of the world. That he, his blood redeemed us from our death sentence and our sentence of eternal punishment that we deserve because we are sinful. He gave us a way out of that. He said, just as I had Moses hold up the serpent, that bronze serpent in the desert, in the wilderness, so am I. I don't know if you know the story about the bronze serpent. When Moses was taking the Israelites across the desert, um, the wilderness, uh, for those 40 years, they ate manna. You know, they, they, they had water and manna, and they didn't really have a lot. They grumbled and complained a lot um, because... They were missing some of the stuff that they had in Egypt. Well, they were slaves in Egypt, but still they were kind of, you know, like we had food over there, you know. Um, Moses really was our leader. Aaron, his brother, and Miriam, his sister, was there with him as well. And they were, Aaron kind of was his spokesperson. Um, Moses, you know, was the one that carried the staff that parted the Red Sea, um, all that. He... He's, God had told him to make a bronze serpent because there had been some scorpions and little serpents that had bit the Israelites and were killing them because they were just they were just complaining against Moses and not wanting to do anything that he said. And here he was leading thousands and thousands of these people across this desert. It should have taken a 10 or 11 days and it took him 40 years. Okay, there's a lot to that, but we won't get into that right now. Um, so all they had to do, God said, was look upon this bronze serpent that he held up and they would be cured and they would not die if they were stung. But some of the people didn't look at the serpent. It was too simple, too easy. It seemed foolish to them as the cross does to some people, the Bible says. But Jesus uses it, for example, as, that, as, that, as simple as it is. It's so easy. But you got to believe that that is going to save you. We have to believe with our hearts and confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer, that he is, he, he is God in the flesh. He came to save us and give us eternal life through him. To know about the, the sacrifice that, that was made for on behalf of us it is the most, is the answer to our lives. This time in our life is, is, our, is our chance to get it right. Our chance to, to get right with God. That's what righteousness is, is rightness with God. We have this opportunity right now to do that. That is something that I know to be a fact. I know the Bible is a fact. Everything in it is true. Not one word is not true in there. It's alive and powerful. Please read the Bible. Please read it. There's so much in it. And and when I do come on anymore, I mean, I will be reading verses of the Bible um, from now on to, you know, just to, just so you know, I'm, I'm talking, I know what I'm talking about, okay? I've studied and with life experience plus that, 
I have a lot to teach. I've learned a lot over the years. I am almost 50, I'm 49, so I have some gray hair, I think. I may be getting a little wise, I hope. I mean, I've done a lot of stupid stuff in my life, but I also learned. My testimony is um, like everyone's testimony. It has power to change lives. I do have this testimony, though. Jesus Christ is alive and that he died for you on the cross. And if you would have been the only person in this world or galaxy or anything, he would, or in existence, he would, he would have done it for you. Like Jesus said, you don't know what you're made of. He said that to James and John. You don't know what spirit you're made of. He's telling them you are of the spirit of God. You don't even know what you're made of. You know, you're made of stardust. Spirit of God, spirit of God is living inside you. The creator of everything is inside you. Yes, our, our body's made of the dust of the earth, but we have the Holy Spirit in us. The Holy Spirit lives in us when we choose to follow Jesus, when we choose to believe to accept, excuse me, when we choose to accept the ransom, when we choose to accept Jesus' sacrifice for us, that his blood cleanses us from all sin, when we know that he, his life was, in, it was used in exchange for us, he took our punishment. We were sentenced to be executed, and he took our place. Okay, and now that he's in heaven on the right hand of God in heavenly places as we're seated, if we're spiritually with him, which we are, he, he, he lives every day to intercess for us so that when we do mess up or we don't do what is correct, either because we have not learned it yet or either because we have all these circumstances and devil's coming at us and we just haven't learned how to put our armor on yet. He intercedes for us. He's our high priest and our intercessor. He's our advocate. He's like our lawyer, you know, up there, you know, uh, pleading our case for us. God is totally satisfied with the punishment that Jesus took for all of our sins. That was immense and powerful he is totally content and satisfied with that so we need to jump on that train and be on that train when he comes back okay that's all it takes it's so easy and when we live for god it's not hard you know it's not burdensome like he says it's not difficult it's actually really wonderful and easy and fun and adventurous god is a He's like a tour guide. He takes us on this adventure, and, it, and he loves us. And it's sad when I, when I see people that are alone, and some people are just like, I wish I just had somebody to talk to. I wish I, wish I wasn't alone. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm alone most of the time, but, but I'm not because I, I, I talk to God. I talk to him like I'm, like I'm talking to you right now. Well, more personal, but, you know, he's here. You know, he, he, he's in me. And the reason I'm doing this right now is because he's in me. And he's, he's telling me to reach out and tell people about him and about, yeah, look, look, look at me. He's like, look at Melissa here. You know, she's been through this. She's been through that. She's got, I'm, she's, I'm 50. Okay. And I've been through ups and downs my whole life. I've tried to be stopped by the devil so many times, okay? God has always came through for me. But I also, I also knew that this, this Bible, this Bible, his words, his words showed me and, and, and it tells me who he is. I got to know God through reading his word. I got to know him. And you might say, oh, he's too good to be true. Yeah, he's too good. He's too good. It is too good to be true. 
that it is too good to be true that, that, that Jesus died for us. It is. It doesn't change it. Change it. It's still a fact. Um, it is. <laughs> it, it seems like we're not worthy. We're not. But he did it anyway. You know? And then when you realize how, how much he loves you, because, I mean, because obviously if he's willing to die for you, you must be important, right? You must be really important. And if you don't believe that, I don't know what to tell you. Think about it. The God of the universe came in human form to rescue you. He knew that you wouldn't make it without that him and he wasn't going to have one lost uh-uh like the lost sheep the 99 sheep one goes off he goes and chases that one and leaves the 99 behind he goes and chases the one lost sheep because that's how important you are to him that's how important you are to him there are many parables in the bible about how important we are to god the whole Bible is a, a love letter to us by God. And a lot of people are intimidated to read it. D don't be. This, our God is a mighty God. Yes, he's strong and powerful, all powerful, all knowing. However, you need to be, when you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, when you finally feel the love, the connection with him, and you, you begin to get the mind of Christ, and you start to exhibit the, the fruit of the Spirit. And you're able to, to treat other people the way God wants us to. Willingly and, and desiring to do his will. You, then you will be able to read that Bible and, and realize it was written with you in mind. And take it very personally. Take everything written in that Bible very personally. Psalm 91 is a protection prayer. If you ever need protection, read that. Psalm 139 is a psalm that tells you how wonderful and unique and special you are and how he really knew what he was doing when he made you. Psalm is the middle. If you just open the Bible kind of in the middle, it's right there. Psalms, P-S-A-L-M-S. -S. My favorite psalm, though, is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. He says he's a good shepherd. He said a bad shepherd, a bad shepherd will want to run away when a wolf comes and not protect his sheep. God obviously doesn't do that. He will stand in front of us and protect us before he lets any one of his sheep be harmed. And you are a sheep of God. You are God's sheep. You're his you're his baby. So God will protect you. I want to pray and then, and then I will um, make another video soon. Um, it's this, my next one's probably going to be about Samson. Samson, I've been um, hearing, um, when I've been watching and hearing sermons about Samson lately, I, I'm reading it. it. Yeah, so I'll probably be doing that. There's a lot of good lessons in that that I think you would enjoy. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this, these people that are watching. Lord, they obviously are hungry for you or they wouldn't be watching this, Lord. Everyone needs you. Everyone needs a Savior. We accept we need you as a Savior, Lord. And we want our life to change. And we want that Holy Spirit, that fire around us where the devil can't touch us, Lord. We want that more than anything. More than anything, we want to be with you for eternity, because you are the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody gets to the Father except through you. So we're just asking that you come into our lives, crash into their lives like, like you did mine, invade them, invade their lives. Because that's how much you love. It's a crazy love, right? Crazy. Father, please touch them and heal them and just give them the peace and comfort, Lord, because once you come into their lives and once they realize how much you love them, they'll be able to be overcomers and conquerors and everything, and they can do everything and anything with the strength that you give them, Lord. 
I ask that you pour that down on every single person listening to my voice, Lord. And I won't be like James and John. They want to cause fire to come down from heaven. Not the bad kind that injures people. But I will call down the fire of the Holy Spirit on you. Because Jesus is the one that baptizes with fire. So I pray, Jesus, that you baptize them with your Holy Spirit, Lord. And wrap your arms around them. And show them in your word to either have them get an app on their phone or have an actual paper Bible, Lord. Let them have see the scriptures you want. That is your voice. That is the word. The word was made flesh. That's you in those pages, Lord. We know that. And so we're asking that you give, give us the desire to read your word every single day, Lord. Like you said, Jesus, you said you have food that no one else knows about. <laughs> and it's the word and the will of God. Lord, I love you so much. You're so wonderful. And I know you love everybody. So please put your hand on these people's lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Okay, bye guys. Love you all. And remember, you are chosen. You are special. You're unique. You're God's trophy. You're his baby. So he wants to love you. He wants to show you such great things. Let him. Ask him. <laughs>